this is H.C. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy IX! Last time, we were told to head to Gizamaluke's Grotto, which will take us to Bermisha so we can see where we want, or what's going on there. But before we do that, let's do some side quests. We can go over to Chocobo's Forest over there, but first I want to check out this uh, swamp here. What's that? Lindblom, huh? How do we get all the way over there from here? That's a pretty long trip. Well, I suppose it worked out, so... Okay, so let's turn the map around and head on over there, then. And since last time I changed my equipment and ability setup, I've listed it in the video description there. So, uh, if you wanna... If you have a question about it, let me know in the comment section there. Um, I've only equipped some weaker equipment, simply to learn some abilities from them. So, that's why I have some of that stuff equipped. By the time I'm done with the side quests, I should have most of the best stuff equipped. Okay, so, let's head on up here. Hey, it's the, uh, tutorial guys. I thought this place looked a little familiar. Let's see who lives around here. The Q Continuum? No, no. Hey, it's that guy from the, uh, what is it? The, the kitchen back at Alexandria there. Huh. Well, there we go. Let's see who else lives around here. I wonder if that is the exact same guy from Alexandria there. Maybe just someone who looks like him? I don't know. Apparently these guys are Q's. And they're the Q clan. And they love frogs. Well, I suppose there's worse things to, uh, like to eat. Or weirder things. But anyway, this guy's trying to get a frog, so let's help him out. Zidane got a potion. I mean, frog. Hey, got a frog? Hey, hey you want the frog? You want the frog? Get the frog! Come on, get it! Get it! Get the frog! Get the frog! So how's it going, man? Or, lady? I can't tell what the hell you are. Uh, Kina is a cube. They, I don't know if they ever explain it, but, uh, I think they're asexual, or they don't have a gender, or... Whatever, but unfortunately, in my language, we don't have a gender-neutral pronoun. So I'm just going to refer to Kina as a male, or he, simply because uh, in the game, he can't equip most of the female exclusive equipment, except for the uh, Lamia's tiara for some reason. Maybe it's because he's a sort of a mage-type character, but, well, there we are. Oh, hey, Quail. Get your ass to Mars, Quaid. Or quail, or never mind. So how's it going? What's going on? Oh, okay. Oh, maybe he is that guy from Alexandria, huh? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, that is true. We're not in Alexandria anymore, though. Sure! Lots of good frogs everywhere. Deplete the supply. Oh, okay. Well, I'll keep an eye out for those marshes there. Sounds like a plan. Sure! Why not? He has absolutely nothing to do with the plot, but as we all know, every good RPG has to have a random character in your party who has no good reason to be there. Actually, Kina at this point is an optional character. Uh, eventually, you'd have to recruit him, but for now, uh, I'm going to get him early. He's essentially the blue mage of the game, and, well, he eats his enemies in order to learn blue magic. I suppose it's better than the other ways of learning blue magic in previous games. But essentially, that's how it works. Kina is a very nice character. I really like him. We've got a lot of blue magic to learn for him at this point, but I want to go over as much different things as I can for right now. Really? Huh. Well, let's ask him about your grandpa. Sure. Maybe we can get a little more background on Viv here. Maybe these guys uh, give birth to uh, black mages. Quan? Oh, so that's his grandpa's name. Huh? 
Oh, do you know him or? No, I guess not. Oh. Hmm. Oh, okay, so he does know him. Okay. So why can't you tell us more about him? I have no son! I, I mean, um, Quan! Whatever. Well, I guess not. Hmm. That was weird. Well, we'll learn more about that later, but not right now. Not right now. Soon enough. Okay, so anyway, we got more party members with Pina. So, let's uh, equip him. He used the fork as a weapon. Uh, it deals pretty random damage, but the base damage is pretty good. So, it's pretty alright. I mean, look at 34 attack power compared to everyone else. That's pretty good. So, let's see. What else do we got? Might as well equip the steepled hats, glass armlets. We'll get a, something else for him to equip for armor to learn something eventually. And, let's see. Let's go with the glass buckle and then I'll work on Millionaire last. Or, well, eventually. But, there we are. Okay, so we got all that. So, now let's go catch some frogs with Kina there. This is a fun little mini game. Uh, you have to have Kina in your party in order to play. So, let's go do that and catch some frogs. Sounds like a great idea. You don't actually do anything with them, but you gotta catch them all the same. So let's go do that. Now, you can't just go into the water and grab them. So what you have to do is wait for them to hop onto land and then quickly grab them. There's a little trick to it that I like to use where, let's see, it'd probably be better for me to demonstrate it. Eh, maybe not there. Probably up here. If you stay close to the edge of the water, you might be able to catch them in mid-jump, even though they're in the water there, and they're not hopping onto land. Uh, sometimes I can get that to work, sometimes not so well. I uh, like that one there. You see how it hopped into the water, but I still caught it in mid-air? That's a little trick that I sometimes use to get it. Now, if you catch enough frogs, Quail will show up and give you a reward for doing that. All right. Now, this, you also have to think about the long term with this minigame as well. Uh, so, like, let's see. Let's catch this frog as a female. I want to let that one go. Because once you're done with this minigame, uh, essentially uh, what will happen is over time, the frogs will eventually respawn and repopulate the swamp. Uh, they seem to respawn faster if you leave an adult male and adult female uh, together here, obviously. Um, now, I don't know exactly how what effects the respawning rates. So, I've heard the golden frog affects it, but I have not personally observed that, so I don't know. I don't know for sure how that works. Let me see if I can get this one. Yes. Okay, there's an adult male. But since I found an adult female in the upper right, I want to let the male go, so that way I know that I'll have an adult male and female left. The advantage I have here is that the female is in the upper right corner, so I pretty much have it isolated up there. So basically, all I have to do now is keep track of the adult male frog, and so that way I don't have to keep track of too many frogs at once. And basically, just keep on catching frogs until you catch all of them except one adult male, one adult female here, and we should be in pretty good shape. Oh, come on. Get on to land. Now, the golden frog is pretty easy to catch, too. So that's pretty nice. Got a male there. Now, essentially, my goal is to get nine frogs by the time I get to get to Maluke's Grotto. The reason I want to do that is because there's a really, really, really good reward by them. So basically, what I want to do is catch six frogs, leave an adult male and adult female frog together, and then I should be able to, um, well, by the time I'm done with all the rest of the side quests, they should have at least spawned one more frog, and then I'll just clear out the entire swamp here to get the reward that I want. Let's see, that was the one that I had before, right? The male? I forget. Nuts. But yeah, you gotta keep track of these guys. Oh, come on. Okay, come on. Get on the land. Get on the land. Ah. Sometimes if you're too close to them, you might scare them away. Again, I don't know exactly how this minigame works. Come on. Get them. Nuts. Okay, come on. Come on. Go to the left. Go to the right. 
There we go. There we go. Come on. Down. Down. Down, boy! Come in here! Come on. I can get him. Come on. Left. Down. Left. Left. Yeah! Okay. Come on. Come on. I can get him. Yes! Got it. Okay. So now we got an adult male and an adult female here. So let's just leave to stop the minigame. All right. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. I'm done catching. I am done for now. So just leave these two here. We'll probably come back in about an hour of real game time. And by then, we'll have more frogs to catch. All right. Okay, I just took a moment to equip some abilities on Kina there. Uh, namely, I got uh, Antibody to protect against poison, High Tide to allow him to trance faster. And I'll explain why that's important for him. Uh, well, as soon as I get into a battle here, there's a couple enemies that I'm looking for, so that way I can learn some new blue magic for him. So let's go ahead and uh, do that, as long as we're here. There's uh, two blue magic spells that I want to get for him. Okay, there we go. We got a new enemy. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce these guys, but we'll find out. They are weak to thunder. Actually, every enemy here is weak to thunder. Let's steal from Axolotl, something like that. I don't know how you pronounce that, but anyway, they've got a little over 200 HP. So basically, the way you learn blue magic in the game is so much better than any other Final Fantasy game. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, the way it works is you have to use the eat command. Once you've gotten the enemy down low enough on HP, haha, -ha, there we go. All right. Uh, yeah, once you get it down low enough on HP, then you can basically take it out or use the eat command on them. Ow. Use the eat command on them, and you'll learn the enemy skill or blue magic spell. And then you can use it right in the battle that you learn it. So that's pretty nice. You don't have to worry about the enemy casting it on you or casting it on the one specific character. Just get its HP low enough, and you'll be able to learn the new blue magic. So there you are. It's a pretty nice system of learning blue magic. It doesn't take forever to get it. So now what I want to do is take a moment to uh, find the other enemy around here, and, well, I'll just use save states just for the sake of recording this, but, you know, find the other enemy yourself, obviously. Okay, we just got one more enemy to find around here. Hopefully this is the one I'm looking for. Well, if it wasn't, I would have edited this out. So, come on. Yes, there it is. The Gigant Toad. They got a little over 200 HP. So, uh, well, let's see. Freya should be able to get them down close enough without actually killing them. So, let's take them out. They are weak to thunder, just so you know. They do deal quite a bit of damage with their water spell. Wow, that's a lot. They got big eyes on them. Okay, come on. Maybe steal from the other one. Yeah, that should be good enough. They got 242 HP, so I think that'll be good enough. If you need to whittle them down a little bit, maybe use, uh, maybe use BB to attack them. But that should be good. Oh, no. Okay, a little more, a little more. Oh, come on. Glowing eyes, yeah, that puts you to sleep, but... Okay, well, he didn't hurt the ones that I cared about, so that's good. Okay, that might be enough. Let's give it another try. Oh, come on. Yeah, when you're asleep, uh, magic won't wake you up, unlike other games. What the hell? They should have been weak enough by now. I think you've got to get them down below, like, 12.5% or 1 eighth their max HP. So, hopefully that will be enough this time. Alright, we've woken up. Just got to be careful. You don't want to kill them until you've actually got them. Come on, Kina. Get it? Yes, there we go. We learned Frog Breath. Okay, finish him! Okay, well, we've got a lot more blue magic to learn for uh, Kina. Will Kina be feeling blue tomorrow? Or will we be icy hot? Find out next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy IX! This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day.